on the 6th of June 1944 US Allied Expeditionary Forces landed on the beaches of Normandy France 76 years ago this weekend over 10,000 servicemen lost their lives on the beaches of Normandy they fought to free the world of the tyranny of Adolf Hitler and the German Third Reich and to make this world a better place Gail a viewer and subscriber of the channel sent us a very special gift earlier this year she sent us a blanket that blanket was very special to her and her family and she entrusted me to take care of that blanket and to bring that blanket into my collection and help her the memory of her father live on creel robert sprig was a young man when he enlisted in the u.s army during world war ii private spring enlisted in the united states army with the 78th infantry division 311th infantry regiment fox company private sprague was not on the beaches of normandy on the 6th of june 1944. he did not make it into the european theater of operations until later after that summer but Sprague went on and fought in some of the most vicious battles of World War II. He fought against the Germans at the Battle of the Bulge. He fought against the Germans at the Rhine. He was wounded twice, and maybe three times, as the third time was not documented. He also talked about the hospital ships, about hating tea, eating spaghetti for breakfast. Little stories such as this are a vital part to our history they tell us who we are they tell us where we come from and they honor the memory of those who served before us for many of those who served they didn't make it home they're still over in the fields of france holland germany and those who did make it home suffer scars for the rest of their days like sprague a lot of men couldn't talk about what he has seen they would just tell tidbits of pieces even now when most of these men in their 90s they still very seldom talk about what they did during the war it's important for us to understand what these men went through in order to understand where we're going in this episode of history saver 1941 we're going to take you on a journey we're going to introduce you to mr creel robert sprague we're going to give you an idea of who this man was. Even though we don't know a whole lot about his experiences in World War II, we're going to retrace the footsteps of where he went by taking a look at his unit. We're going to see the places that he fought. We're going to see the places where he cried. We're going to see the places where he lost his friends. And hopefully what you will take away from this video today will be the importance of remembering. The importance of remembering the greatest generation. They are the greatest asset. And every day, those men are dying by the hundreds. Behind me lie several of those World War II veterans whose stories have now went to heaven with them. So stay tuned as we dive into the story of Private Sprague. All right, guys, we are back in the war room and the uh, studio now. And as I was explaining out at the cemetery, viewer and subscriber to the channel, Miss Gail Corfman, sent us her father's blanket that belonged to him um, during World War II. And he came home with this blanket. And Miss Gail sent this blanket to me, he asked me if I would like to have it for my collection and um, be able to tell her father's story from World War II. And I've been helping research her father's story. Um, it's still an ongoing process, but in this video, you'll learn a little bit about Mr. Sprague and a little bit about the 78th Lightning Division or 78th Infantry Division. Um, this is the blanket that she sent to us. It is gray, um, kind of a navy bluish gray, and it has a blue stripe all the way down the blanket. Now, I'm not going to unroll this blanket all the way out because you can clearly see um, the details of the blanket on, on camera here. But um, it is a very uh, neat blanket. 
this has no US markings on it whatsoever um, which is odd the blankets in great condition and we are gonna we're gonna try to keep it that way here in our collection um, it is my suspicion um, even though it's unclear where this blanket came from or how he acquired it it is my suspicion that he got this maybe from a hospital ship or a field station um, it's very possible as you know usually the general issue for GIs uh, on the blankets was the GI green and um, this blanket is of course gray with blue stripes and it's very similar actually to some German pattern blankets but uh, I do not believe this is a German blanket but it is neither or less whatever the story is behind this blanket it's still very cool and it's amazing when you have something like this when you hold it when you touch it to think about where it's been how he got it and where it came from and what this blanket actually witnessed so um i um highly enjoyed this blanket thank you miss gail for entrusting us with the care of this and hopefully you guys will learn a little bit in this video about the 78 lightning division and mr creel robert sprague who served during world war ii d-day 1944 was one of the most important dates in world history troops from all over the world and the allied expeditionary forces began the assault on Normandy beaches on June the 6th, 1944. Even though plans for earlier dates of the invasion have failed due to weather conditions, the United States forces, Canadian forces, and other forces from Britain and all around the world who landed on Omaha, Utah, Sword, Juneau, and Gold beaches were met with a lot of heavy resistance. German pillboxes and bunkers and the cliffs of the Normandy countryside rained down hell upon the men as they stormed the beaches in Normandy. Several thousand men of all different nationalities, all different backgrounds, were killed in Normandy. Black, white, Jewish, you name it, was a part of the Normandy invasion. Mr. Creel Robert Sprague was born the 8th of March, 1925, in Bartholomew County, Indiana, in the United States. At around the age of 18, Mr. Sprague was working odd jobs at home he was uh, able to put off going for a little while but like other teenagers of his age and after the bombings of December 7 1941 so many other members of his age class going overseas to fight for our country during World War II Creel wanted to do the same and so he enlisted in the United States Army and was sent to the 78th Infantry Division. The 78th Infantry Division was nicknamed the Lightning Division. Their slogan, All the Cider, or Boldness, was echoed on their shoulder patches. Their patch was a red semicircle with a white bolt of lightning superimposed upon it. The 78th Division of the United States Army was activated on the 23rd of August, 1917 at Camp Dix, New Jersey. It consisted of four infantry regiments, the 309th, the 310th, the 311th, and the 312th, and three artillery regiments, the 307th, 308th, and 309th. The division was originally allocated to New York and the northern Pennsylvania area in the National Army Plan. In France, during the summer and fall of 1918, it was the point of the wedge 
of the final offensive which knocked out Germany. The 78th was in three major campaigns during World War I. Meuse-Argon, St. Mihiel, and Lorraine. Demobilization at the end of the war took place in June of 1919. During World War I, the 78th Division had two Medal of Honor recipients. Casualties were total of 7,144 men, 1,169 of which were killed in action, and 5,975 were wounded in action. As World War II broke out, the 78th Division was ordered into active military service at Camp Butner, North Carolina on August 15, 1942. It was designated as a replacement pool division on 1st of October 1942 and remained in this assignment until the 1st of March 1943 when the 78th Division was restored to field duty and to its training regimen. The 78th Division then moved to the Carolina Maneuver Area on 15 November 1943 to test its training and then returned to Camp Butner on 7 December 1943. The personnel then went on the Christmas leave and deployed to the Tennessee Maneuver Area on the 25th of January 1944. There, they participated in the 5th to 2nd Army Tennessee Maneuvers. They then moved to Camp Pickett, Virginia, where they filled their TO&E, or the Table of Organization and Equipment and then deployed to the staging area at Camp Kilner, New Jersey on 4th October, 1944. After two years as a training division, the 78th embarked for the European Theater from the New York POE on the 14th of October, 1944. There, they sailed for England. They arrived in England on the 26th of October, 1944. And after further training, they crossed into France, on the 22nd of November, 1944, a few months after the D-Day landings. In April of 1944, Creel Robert Sprague enlisted in the United States Army. His records show that he enlisted at Fort Benjamin Harrison, Indiana, in April of 1944. From there, he was sent to the training camp, as you're about to see in some of this video.
As you can see, the training camp of the 78 division was very beautiful, but don't let that fool you. Now, up until his enlistment, Creel Robert Sprague worked, on the worked as an agricultural worker or farmer or farm hand until 1944 when he enlisted. Like many of his friends, as I said before, he wanted to do his part for his country. So he was sent to the camp that you just saw and then went with the 78th Division to England and ultimately with the land of France. Not much is known of Creel Robert Sprague's personal accounts from World War II. We do know that he was awarded a Bronze Star. We also know he was wounded twice and maybe a third time. As we dive into the history of the 78th Infantry Division, these are the experiences that Mr. Creel experienced for himself during World War II. Creel was one of 12 members in his family. He had two of his older brothers serving during the war as well. Creel Robert Sprague was assigned to F Company of the 311th Infantry Regiment, 78th Infantry Division. The division landed in France on our 22nd of November, 1944, after training in England. The division then moved to Tangeren, Belgium, on the 27th of November, 1944, and then to Rochen, Germany, on the 7th of December, 1944, to prepare for combat. The 311th Infantry Regiment, of which Sprague was a part of, was attached to the U.S. 8th Infantry Division in the Hurtgen Forest during the Battle of the Bulge on 10th of December, 1944. Taken from the after-action reports of the 311th Infantry Regiment for the 78th Infantry Division for the period of the 1st of December, 1944 through the 31st of December, 1944, were a narrative of operations telling us what the men were doing and what was happening. Phase 1 on the 1st of December 1944 to the 3rd of December 1944. At the beginning of the period, the regiment was in Parisien, Belgium. Having arrived at that point by rail and motor from France on the 26th of November 1944, was assigned to the 9th U.S. Army. The tactical mission during this period was that of reserve for the 9th U.S. Army. Although the length of the 78th stay at this station wasn't known in advance, an extensive training schedule was planned and executed while the regiment remained in this location. The training schedule consisted of the following, physical training, detailed inspection of weapons, detailed inspection of vehicles, special training in mines and booby traps, passing air defenses, personal hygiene, mount breeding, aircraft recognition, chemical warfare training, and special training in small unit tactics. During this period, the regimental officers, including the S-2 and S-3 of the staff, visited the units of the 29th and 30th Infantry Divisions in actual combat and frontline sectors. 9th U.S. Army dispatched a combat orientation team consisting of five officers and five enlisted men who conducted a valuable two-hour school for the officers of the regiment. On the 6th of December 1944, information regarding a new mission reached the command post and regimental commander. All company commanders except for the service company commander proceeded to headquarters of the 5th Corps to receive detailed instructions from the commanding general 5th Corps concerning the new mission. In the meantime, the regiment was preparing to move to a position as the 5th Corps Reserve in compliance with the 78th Infantry Division movement orders. On the evening of 8th of December 1944 at 2300 hours, a message was received from the commanding officer instructing Executive Officer Lt. Col. W. A. Remenschneider to move the 311th Combat Team, who Krill was a part of, by motor to the frontline positions in the Hurtgen Forest to relieve elements of the 13th Infantry Regiment of the 8th Infantry Division. For the purpose of this move, a quartermaster truck company was attached. 9th of December 1944. The combat team with the truck company attached crossed the IP at Tangeren, Belgium at 0730 hours. They then moved by motor to the vicinity of Jägerhaus, Germany, closing in to the detrucking area at 1430 hours. During a motor march, extensive AA precautions were taken. All AA weapons being manned, 60 yard interval between vehicles was maintained and blackout discipline was strictly enforced. There were no rest halts permitted and radio silence was maintained. 
The assembly area was covered with snow and well within range of the known enemy artillery positions. Relief of the 13th Infantry Regiment was commenced immediately. 1st Battalion, 311th Infantry relieved 1st Battalion, 13th Infantry. 2nd Battalion, 311th Infantry relieved 2nd Battalion, 13th Infantry. 311 AT and CNCOs moved into positions occupied by similar units of the 13th Infantry. 3rd Battalion, 311th Infantry moved into regimental reserve positions. On the left flank of the regiment was a 28th Infantry Regiment, and on the right flank, the 16th Infantry Regiment. The command post was established at Jägerhaus, Germany, and a responsibility for the defense of that sector was assumed at 2400 hours. On the 10th of December, 1944, the regiment occupied the positions taken over from the 13th Infantry Regiment and continued to improve the defensive positions engaged in reconnaissance patrols and contact patrols between adjacent units. Only light mortar and artillery fire fell into the regimental sector during this period. Two enemy ME 109s strafed the regimental command post at 1425 on the 10th of December 44 and caused no damage and resulted in one enemy aircraft being shot down by an adjacent AA unit. On the 12th of December 1944, active reconnaissance and combat patrolling was commenced as preparation for a plan of attack was scheduled for 13th of December. During this time, PFC John Solomon of Company I of the 311th Infantry on the 10th, on the 10th of December 1944 was to be the first man of the 78th Division killed. At 1600 hours on the 12th of December 1944, the commanding general of the 8th Infantry Division at, regimental, at the regimental command post gave orders that a diversion attack would be launched by elements of the regiment to assist the 78th Infantry Division in its attack on the south. The balance of the day was spent in reconnaissance planning and preparation of the field order for the following day's attack. 13th December 1944 At 0300 hours, K and A companies left their areas of departure moving through the dense woods of the Hurtgen Forest in total darkness toward their objective. Arriving in the immediate vicinity of their objectives ready to attack at 0630, these units moved out to attack and encountered numerous anti-personnel mines, trip flares, and booby traps in the heavy woods which allowed the enemy to immediately respond with heavy concentration fire of artillery, mortar, and small arms. The attack was pressed forward, each unit moving toward its objective. Company K actually gained part of his objective as the day broke. Company K actual gained part of his objective just as the day broke. However, the enemy fire forced him to withdraw toward ground further to the rear. Company A also reached his objective but was unable to secure the area and this company was ordered to withdraw to his previous position. B and C companies attacked at 0830 on orders from the 1st Battalion commander but were able to move only a short distance to their front because, because of heavy enemy fire. The commanding general of the 8th Infantry Division arrived at the command post at 1340 hours and was given results of the proceedings in that morning. He stated that the attack had been very successful in accomplishing his main mission, which was to divert attention of the enemy from the attack of the 78th Infantry Division, and that he was well pleased with the results. That was a little bit about the experiences that Krill Robert Sprague endured in the Hurtgen Forest during the Battle of the Bulge. The 78th held the area it had taken from the Siegfried Line against the German attacks throughout the winter. The division attacked on the 30th of January 1945 and took Kesternick on the 2nd of February. The town of Smith on the 8th and captured intact the vital Schwamm Manuel Dam the next day. In the events, the Roy River was crossed on the 28th of February and the division joined the offense of the 1st and 9th Armies toward the Rhine. That river was crossed over the Ludendorff Bridge at Remagen on the 8th of March by the 310th Regiment, and they became the first troops to cross in the wake of the 9th Armored Division. The 78th expanded the bridgehead taking Honoff and cutting the part of the Audubon on the 16th of March. From the 2nd of April to the 8th of May, the division was active in the reduction of the Ruhr Pocket, and at Victory Over England Day, or VE Day, they were stationed near Marburg, Germany. 
In mid-November 1945, the division relieved the 82nd Airborne Division on occupation duty in Berlin. In May of 1946, the 3rd Infantry Regiment was moved to Berlin, and on the 15th of June, it took over the Berlin Military District from the division. The 78th Infantry Division was inactivated in Berlin on the 16th of June, 1946. The 311th Infantry Regiment was inactivated in Germany on the 22nd of May, 1946. It was at this time that Creel Robert Sprague found himself on the way back home. This video was just a brief history of some of the history of the 78th Infantry Division. The 78th took some major roles in World War II. They found themselves in the midst of some of the most major and brutal battles of the war. And Creel Robert Sprague was in the middle. Now, although this has been a fairly long video with a lot of information, I want you guys to remember this weekend that freedom isn't free. Even though men like Creel Robert Sprague made it home from World War II, the emotions and their minds were still overseas for the majority of their life. And it's men like Creel Robert Sprague that have paved the way for this country and where we are now. Even though Mr. Sprague didn't participate in the D-Day landings in Normandy, when he landed later in 1944 into France and into the Hurtgen Forest, he helped make a major impact. He was awarded the Bronze Star, the Purple Heart. He was wounded twice and three times that we think. A little small story that Miss Gail Korfman told me of her father was that his mother made him a simple um, silver bracelet um, with his ID engraved in it. And he hated this bracelet because that bracelet almost cost him his life as a sniper. Noticed the glare from the bracelet and took a shot at him, just barely missing him. On the 19th of January 2012, Creel Robert Sprague died at the age of 82 in Columbus, Indiana. He's buried at Ohio Chapel Cemetery, and hopefully this video and his blanket will help his memory go on forever. Again, I would like to dedicate this video to Mr. Sprague and his family. Thank you so much, Miss Gale, for entrusting us with the care of his blanket. And for all of you guys out there, please remember what these men sacrificed during World War II. We only have a few of them, these men with us today. These men are dying by the hundreds. And when they're gone, their stories are lost with them, unless they are preserved. That is one of the missions of this YouTube channel. And thank you so much for supporting us. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Keep preserving history. And stay safe. And always remember the men who come before us. Have a great day and thank you for watching.